Radiation is fun for young and old, but since those eBay listings for 1950s toy Geiger counters are a bit rich for my taste, I want to build my own toy dosimeter. For this, we are going to use this old conductometer. It's trash, so this will be a good second use for it. Its age makes it very hackable, especially since conductance is just inverse resistance. The resistance between those two connectors, which used to connect to the probe, can easily be controlled using a digital potentiometer and a microcontroller. Which microcontroller? Well, it might be a bit overkill, but uh, this ESP32 fitting so well in the battery compartment just must be fate. Basically, all of the internals are going to stay intact. This way, we can keep the sensitivity levels, the calibration mode and the battery indicator, although its readings will become less useful at 3.3 uh, volt compared to the original 4.5 volt. Speaking of volts, as a power source, we are going to use a lithium ferrophosphate battery. Two reasons for this. First, we can connect it directly to the microcontroller, since their voltage ranges fit without any need for a step-down or a boost converter. To protect it against over-discharge, we will use a protection circuit though. Second, compared with lithium-ion or lithium polymer batteries, lithium ferrophosphate batteries are intrinsically safe, which is always a plus when dealing with kits. To increase the play value, we are going to add three capacitive touch sensors on the back to be used as binary encoded input for what the meter should read. After all, we want it to start beeping exactly the moment we hold it close to Aunt Theophania's alleged heirloom ring to just spice up the family reunion. Maybe I am projecting a bit, my nieces and nephews will know what to do. Let's build this. Right after uploading a test sketch onto the ESP, uh, I noticed that we have a loose wire within the meter and it's one of the crucial ones because this is one of the two very tiny connectors that goes to the analog gauge on the front. So I'm going to try to solder it back on. I believe I know where it came from. I've added a test sketch which should hopefully sweep through all the resistances that our potentiometer can provide. Initially, nothing happens because it's off. Now if it switches to battery, okay, it goes to a steady value right at the border of the white and the red in calibration mode. Now we can, we should be able to with the wheel on the side, yes, we are still able to calibrate the meter. My assumption is to the small green point at the black 10 here. Okay, but now once I go to the measurements themselves, we should be able to see the resistance is set to the, uh, at the potentiometer, which can be set from 75 to 100,000 ohm. So, if, oh no, of course we don't see them yet, haha, because I've disconnected the probe. But now once I connect them, yes, something is happening. Okay, what do we see? Now we seem to be at the higher end of the spectrum right now might come down, might come down any second. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there it is. So it goes down to about 11. Let's ignore the unit right now. Let's just call it 11. So how we read this meter is with the black numbers and the red numbers and we have to um, multiply them respectively towards the setting we're using right now. So right now, it went to about, let's say, a four, and we are at the setting 10 to the power of three, so four times 10 to the power of three, so 4,000 
would be the value right now. Maybe it's, yeah, or even 5,000. Okay. So it's 11 or 12 to, let's say, 5,000. That's the range uh, we can generate with our potentiometer. This uh, 5,000 is pretty good, but uh, 12 as the lowest is not ideal. Our highest resistance generates our background radiation level, which in reality is in the ballpark of 0.1 microsievert per hour. But maybe we can make it work by adding an additional 1 mega ohm resistor for when we want a low value to display background radiation. When we want a higher value, a transistor could open a bypass around this resistor, so we only use the potentiometer. After adding the transistor, I was curious how it would behave since the device outputs AC, alternating current, uh, on the probe. This is because water electrolysis, as would happen with direct current, DC, is not really beneficial when measuring conductance. Here, AC has some consequences. For one, this setup really shouldn't work, should it? After all, we are switching AC with a transistor, which isn't really what they do, at least not on their own. But um, somehow it does work. Um, trying to understand why exactly has caused me some despair. I have modeled this circuit in LT Spice, which is a very neat tool. It confirms that this should work, but really hasn't brought me closer to understanding how it works. If it hasn't been obvious so far, I am not an expert in any of this. My guess what's happening is, since our AC voltage and current are so small, I measured before uh, 0.13 volt AC. It is so small compared to what the microcontroller provides through the base of the transistor. Um, the transistor really doesn't mind that much that we basically use collector and emitter the wrong way around half of the cycle. If you have any insights into wh uh, why that actually works and can explain them like I'm five years old, please leave them in the comments. Anyway, um, now the device beeps in partially random intervals, at least when I put this resistor back in, which I just removed to prevent it being annoying. There was a beep. And when we touch these three inputs, we can indicate seven levels of values to be displayed, which are accompanied by some beeping. Um, yellow is binary one, orange is binary 2 and red is binary 4, so when we touch all three of them it goes to 7. And of course we have our background value, which is now, which is now, it's all of course still a bit loose, reading 9 times 10 to the power um, of minus 1, so 0 0.9, which is way closer than the previous 12. So when I touch yellow for binary one. The meter goes to about nine, two goes to about 11, three goes to about uh, 13, 14. If, when you see the needle moving uh, without me uh, changing the inputs, that's part measuring inconsistencies and part randomness that, uh, that has been added. 4 goes to 16, 5 goes to 25, 6 goes to 40, and 70 goes way to the top to, let's say, two and a half thousand or so. Of course, this can be changed later in code, the values um, we are reaching exactly. It would be great if we could move this part of the circuit to the other side, so we only have to solder one row of headers um, on the circuit board, but PIO2 doesn't want to be a capacitive touch sensor, even though it was designated as one. Um, maybe due to the LED on board, I don't know. But of course we are going to respect that and um, 
use the other side as well. Time to fit it uh, inside the housing and to solder it. Fitting it all inside was easier said than done. Somehow this kind of project always needs more space in unanticipated ways, so initial plans turn out to be scaled too optimistic. Off camera uh, we had to cut the back opening bigger, melting part of the battery holder in the process. Uh, we also had um, to grind down the circuit board some more. Now that everything is inside, it's uh, time to touch up uh, the outside. We got this 3D printed holder, thank you Max, for our counter tube, which is uh, a color stripped case from a disposable e-cigarette found on the street. Um, thanks Big Clive. This is going to be get connected with some banana plugs and uh, some dummy wires. On the back goes the battery compartment lid, also thank you Max, and uh, which will house the aluminium touch sensors, one of which is already attached here. Soldering to aluminium is not the easiest. Its uh, protective oxide layer prevents a proper bond with uh, the solder. If we scratch the protective oxide layer, it reforms instantly. Uh, what we're going to do is soldering while excluding oxygen to prevent it from reforming. For, for this we are uh, going to cover the piece in vegetable oil, scratch away the oxide layer and then heat the aluminium until the solder melts to it. Afterwards, uh, we can solder a wire to it. Another issue is, I'm going to turn it on and bring the meter to the max or the gauge to the max. The buzzer is way too silent when inside the case. So before we finish up the outside, we will have to replace its 330 ohm resistor with uh, a 10 ohm one.
Now, after first um, accidentally wiping away the indicator line on the central knob while cleaning and then drawing on a new one with a marker, we are ready to measure some radioactivity equivalent doses. For example, using these two samples. Admittedly, they look better in the dark. This one being an imitation of old uh, radium containing uh, watch hands. And the other one, well, being shiny as well <laughs> and being controlled by opening and closing the lid. I will let you decide uh, which of these two is the more realistic one. We can now turn it on and as before the battery indicator shows us a value. Uh, the calibration mode still works with the uh, small wheel on the side. So and we can go through the different sensitivity levels. On the back we have the three, our three inputs, binary encoded as described before. So this would be the binary one, binary two, bin binary three, binary four, binary four, five, and then six and seven. And as you can hear now, it really starts beeping. Now we can just, for example, here pretend like if this were radioactive, we can could just in indicate radioactivity when we're moving close to it. That works rather nice. In case anyone might be wondering what we are going to do about the unit on the meter itself. It shows micro Siemens, not micro sievert per hour, which would be the radioactivity uh, equivalent dose. But we won't change this. Opening the analog display would likely break it. Uh, I tried uh, it off camera. Um, but more importantly, I've seen on two occasions very smart people ask about why some device measures radioactivity even though it showed micro Siemens. So I'm not too worried about this. If anyone ever asks, this device is rather old. Uh, the unit symbol might as well have changed in the meantime or at least we can claim it. If you're interested in radioactivity related toys, uh, I put a link to the corresponding site of the Museum of Radiation and Radioactivity in the description. I hope you liked this video. I have more ideas for Tinker projects um, with varying expected levels of despair. Um, I will see if I'll ever make another video.